Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Tom Balator, this time with a walkthrough for problem number one in PSET 2. You know, if you look at the Facebook page or the, the edX forum, the number of questions being asked about PSET 2 relative to PSET 1 are much, much lower. And I think there's a few reasons for that. First of all, I think the difficulty of PSET 2 might actually be less than the difficulty of PSET 1, at least the third problem in PSET 1. That was a real doozy. Second, you know, you're all getting better at this. If you've made it through this far, then you know about conditional statements, control of flow, you know about looping, you know about a number of objects, ints, floats, strings, what you can do with them. So you're really getting better at this stuff. A third reason, which I hope is not important, but it might be, is a survivor effect. It might be that some people just saw the problem set one and decided that they had some other things to do and they're not around anymore. So, um, but if you're here, as you are watching this right now, congratulations and uh, hang in there till the end of the course. I think you've made it past one of the major hurdles. Okay, hints on problem number one. Actually, on all the problems in general, I think if P set one was about for loops, then P set two is really about while loops. And you have to think about how you're going to be using while loops. Maybe not in problem one, but definitely in problems number two and three. A very important point, if you're a bit behind and if you've gone through the materials for week two, um, there's two sections, one on simple programs and then one on functions. You don't actually need the material on functions yet. So if you're struggling, you might want to put that off until you finish this piece set, then come back to it. And by the way, I'll have a different walkthrough on um, using functions in this case. I won't be using them for these three problems though. Next, um, you know, if you've studied any economics or any sort of accounting or, or home economics, whatever, forget any of the formulas that you might have learned about calculating interest. Those are not going to help you here. What you really want to do is just step through the logic and use the, um, use the basic programming logic that you've learned so far. And I'll explain that in a second, what that means. Third, well, fourth, excuse me, and most obvious, I think, is that you just need to read the specifications closely, especially this specification. It gives you so much information about how to do the problems. So make sure you read the stuff. I print it out, highlight things, and that's how I do it. Okay, let's actually take a look at the problem itself, the problem statement itself. What does it say? Oh, and by the way, this introduction section here, definitely read through all this because we're going to return to this table and talk about how to code it. That's, I think, really the key for problem number one. But problem number one is paying off debt in a year. Um, well, it says it right here. Write a program to calculate the credit card balance after one year if a person only pays the minimum monthly payment required by the credit card company each month. So you've got a credit card. The example we'll go with is you've got a balance of $5,000. You had a lot of parties. You went on a trip, whatever. You bought a used car or something. $5,000. But... You don't have the money to pay that off. You pay only the minimum amount per month. How much is your balance going to be at the end of the year is this question. You'll be getting three different variables from the grader. One will be the balance, which is the amount you owe at the beginning of the year. The annual interest rate, that's the annual interest rate as a decimal. And then the monthly payment rate, that is whatever percent you have to pay per month in terms of your contract with the credit card. You can't get away with paying nothing, otherwise you have to pay a lot of fees. And this is usually about 2%. Okay, so you have to figure out what you owe at the end of the, the year. So how do you do that? Let's go back here to this introduction section, and I think all you really need to do to solve this problem is to understand this line right here. What happens in one month? And I'll step through this right here in this table, and then I'll go to Python, to Spider, and do a little pseudocode that should help you out. Okay, so you have an initial balance, let's say $5,000. Um, the minimum payment due is, well, in this case, the, min the minimum monthly payment is 2%, so that's 5,000 times that minimum monthly payment in percent, of course, converted in decimal to 0 0.02, and that is $100. So the unpaid balance is just simply that initial balance minus the amount that you're paying, the minimum amount that you're paying. And that leaves you with $4,900. Okay. You got to pay interest, and that's the kicker here, right? Um, and how much is the interest? That is charged on the unpaid balance at the end of the month. And that amount is simply 
this unpaid balance times that annual interest rate divided by 12, 12 months in a year. So that will give you a monthly interest rate based on the annual interest rate. And that's a total of 7350. So what do you actually have at the end of this first month or the zeroth month left over? You have an unpaid balance of $4,900, and then you've got an interest amount of 73.5. So you have to add those two together. So the amount is actually right here. The new balance at the beginning of the next month is going to be that unpaid balance plus the interest, 4973.50. And then you go through the same exact process again. So let's go over to Python and see how that might look in pseudocode. So what you really want to do is iterate over um, 12 months. And as you iterate over those months, you want to do a series of calculations. And if you look back at this, we can get the ideas from here. First of all, we have a balance. We want to calculate the minimum payment, first of all. So what's the minimum payment? Well, that's simple. The minimum payment is the balance times the minimum monthly payment rate. Okay, let me move this over a little bit here so you can see that. Okay, so that's what we get right there. And then when you get that minimum payment, what's next? Well, going back here, you can calculate the unpaid balance. The unpaid balance is the balance minus the minimum payment. Okay. So once you've got the unpaid balance, what's next? You gotta calculate the interest on that. And the interest on that is this amount. It is, the interest is the unpaid balance times this annual interest rate divided by 12. That'll give you a monthly interest rate. And then once you've got that, it's, it's a simple final step here to figure out how much is left at the end, which is simply adding the unpaid balance and the interest. So let's go there again. Um, so the new balance at the end of that time, I'll call it balance, and I'll talk about why that's okay here, is going to be the unpaid balance plus the interest. And if you do that 12 times, you're going to have an answer of a new balance here at the end of the 12 months. And that'll give you your answer, and you've got to report that. So report the, excuse me, report the result. So that's the basic gist of this problem. Some key points here. You don't need to worry about overwriting balance for now. In problems two and problems three, that's going to be a problem because you're going to be doing many different tests based on the initial balance that the grader is giving you. But in this problem, that balance is yours to do what you want with because you're only going through this one time. You're not getting that information from the grader more than once. Okay. Another point is round only at the end. If you look at the specification, it says that you have to round to the nearest cent, right? So hundredth of a dollar. The main point is you don't want to be rounding at every stage, and this especially comes up with problems two and three, um, where rounding early on will produce a result that is off by a few cents, and the grader won't accept it, and you won't get credit for it. So round only at the end. So you'll have to have something in here um, you know, where you've got a rounded result. Okay, and there's a function, of course, called round that's described in the specification that you will have, of course, read. Okay, see you in the walkthrough for problem number two.